Sido on eight day remand in lawmaker and a murder case. A journey of homebound people begins. Cattle markets busy with Eid al Azhar approaches. Tigers to face Dutch tonight in Super 8 ceiling battle. Those are the headlines. This is 18 News. Good evening, viewers. I'm Salim Kadir, and you're watching English Bulletin. Janaida Awami League General Secretary Saidul Karim Mintu has been taken on eight day remand to know whether he is the financier of lawmaker Anwarul Azim murder incident. Additional Commissioner of Detective Branch of Dhaka Metropolitan Police Haruna Rashid made the disclosure at a briefing at his office on Thursday afternoon. The DB chief also said they will also try to find out whether Saidul Karim Mintu has ordered the killing of lawmaker Anwarul Azim Anar. Sir Saidul Karim Mintu's remand is very much important in this context. Butcher Jihad has given sensational statement in a video recording about lawmaker Anar murder in Sanjeeva Gardens of Kolkata. Three times elected lawmaker from Janaida Tho, Anwar al Azim Anar had remained missing after going to Kolkata on May 12. Later, his murder news came to limelight on May 22. A team of DB police went to Kolkata on May 26 to probe Anar murder incident. The police accompanied by a team from Criminal Investigation Department of West Bengal went to Sanjeeva Gardens. They also took Butcher Jihad, arrested in Kolkata with them. At the time, Jihad made a confessional statement about Anar murder. He said, Anar was first made unconscious with chloroform. Later, he was killed through strangulation by pressing a pillow. Finally, his body was dismembered and the limbs were flushed in the commode of the bathroom so that there could be no trace of the murder incident. Homebound people were seen returning home with great sense of relief on the second day of train journey on Thursday. A rush of homebound people was seen from the morning at Komlapur railway station. The train passengers were able to enjoy hassle-free journey as none was able to enter platform without ticket. All the number of passengers was higher than that of the first day, however, no crowding was seen. Meanwhile, Director of RAB's Legal and Media Wing, Commander Arafat Islam, visited Kamalapur Railway Station to see the security arrangements made for homebound people. He said monitoring of Intelligence Wing has been beefed up. RAB is working to ensure security at railway stations and bus terminals. People also thronged to bus terminals of the capital to enjoy Eid with the near ones. Cattle have started to come in the makeshift cattle markets of the capital. Buyers and sellers are now trying to judge the price of the cattle. Noman Mahmoud Rahman brings you more. Cattle market in Bosila of Mahmudpur is one such market that gets set up every year during the time of Eid ul Aja. Different arrangements have been made for the cattle traders coming from different districts. The cattle are being kept at well-covered place rather than open sky. There are arrangements for cashless transaction and treatment of cattle. However, there are no fans to give some respite to cattle traders in extreme hot, humid weather. The cattle traders are also unhappy about the toilet facilities. Meanwhile, Mayor of Dhaka North City Corporation, Atikul Islam, has warned that action will be taken if cattle markets are being set up beyond the designated places. He also said Dhaka North City Corporation will not depend on the contractor of the cattle markets for cleaning. It is thought everyone willing to sacrifice the cattle on Idul Aja 
will get their desired cattle from this cattle market. Noman Mahmudur Rahman, English Desk, ATN News. No irregularities and extortions centering sacrificial cattle markets will be tolerated. Inspector General of Police Abdullah Al Mamun issued the warning during a visit to Guptali Cattle Market on Thursday. Talking to the media, the IGP said no public sufferings to be allowed through setting up of cattle market on the roads. No cattle laden vehicles will be allowed to stop on the roads. Besides, stern action will be taken against setting up of cattle markets forcefully. The IGP said actions will be taken if any member of the police force shows softened stance against the extortionists. We now begin with news on ICC T20 Men's World Cup. Bangladesh will take on Netherlands in T20 World Cup tonight. Tigers are eyeing to win the match that will ensure Super 8 berth for them. The match will begin at Bangladesh time, 8.30 p.m. Shanto's team stepped into the Caribbean island with disappointment of losing a cliffhanger against South Africa by only four runs. If they fail to win the match against the Dutch, then it will be difficult for them to make it to the Super 8. That is why Tigers are thinking of nothing else rather than the win. However, failure of top-order batting has become a matter of concern for the team management. Statistics of three wins against Dutch might work as a morale booster for them. Still then, Shanto's men will have to be extra cautious about the Dutch as they are capable of beating anyone on the given day. We are now following up with a short break and we will be back soon with Rituals of Holy Hodge begin from Friday. Children at death risk in Gaza observe UNICEF and WHO. Welcome back. You're watching 18 News. This is Salim Kadir with English Bulletin. There is an adequate supply of sacrificial cattle for Eid ul Azha. Minister for Fisheries and Livestock Abdul Rahman made the disclosure at a briefing at the Secretariat on Thursday. The minister at the time warned the cattle traders about high price of cattle through manipulation. He said, if they resort to such tricks to get high price, ultimately they will be loser. Replying to a question, the Minister for Fisheries and Livestock said, not fixing price, rather his ministry has ensured adequate supply of sacrificial cattle. The press briefing was organized to brief the media about elevation of Bangladesh's ranking from third place to second place in sweet water fishing superseding China. He said the quantity of catching sweet water fish in Bangladesh now stands at 1.32 tons. We now begin with news from around the world. The annual Hajj pilgrimage will start on Friday with around 2 million Muslims from around the world expected to take part. The number of pilgrims this year expected to exceed those in 2023 when over 1.8 million people performed the Hajj. Muslim pilgrims have been streaming into the Saudi Arabia's holy city of Mecca ahead of the Hajj. Saudi officials say about 1.5 million foreign pilgrims have arrived in the country by Tuesday from across the world. More are expected and hundreds of thousands of Saudis and others living in Saudi Arabia will also join them when the pilgrimage officially begins on Friday. 
Believers converge on the holy city for several days of rituals in which they retrace the Prophet Muhammad wasallam's last pilgrimage. First ritual requires walking seven times around the Kaaba. Pilgrims next walk seven times between the two hills of Safa Marwa and then they move to Mina ahead of the main rites at Mount Arafat. UNICEF and World Health Organization want in latest thousands of children are at death risk from severe malnutrition in Gaza. Israeli blockade is preventing essential aid from entering into Gaza, resulting starvation death of Palestinian children due to dire humanitarian crisis there. UNICEF said some 3,000 Palestinian children are at risk of dying from malnutrition, whereas World Health Organization said over 8,000 children aged under five have been treated for acute malnutrition in Gaza. WHO chief Tidros Adhorom Gerberusius said 28 of those children had died and a significant portion, proportion of Gaza's population are now facing catastrophic hunger and famine-like conditions. However, Gaza officials said over 15,500 children killed and 17,000 are without parents after 250 days of Israeli's war on Gaza. Viewers, we'll take a short break. Stay with us. Welcome back, this is Salim Kadir and you're watching English Bulletin. About 40 Indians were killed among 49 deceased after a fire broke out in the building housing foreign workers in Kuwait's Mangaf city. 50 others have been injured. India Ministry of External Affairs officials said this. The blaze started in the kitchen of six-story building erupted early on Wednesday while most of the workers were asleep. Nearly 195 people, all workers of the same company, were living there. Department of Non-Resident Keralites Affairs of State, Kerala said the number of people from Kerala who died in Kuwait fire tragedy has risen to 24. Minister of State Kirti Vardhan Singh reached Kuwait Thursday to take stock of the situation and to meet Indians injured and oversee early repatriation of mortal. In a post on X. Prime Minister Modi expressed grief over loss of lives and said Indian Embassy Kuwait is closely monitoring the situation and working with the authorities there to assist the affected. Before ending the bulletin, the top stories once again. Saido on eight day remand in lawmaker on a murder case. A journey of homebound people begin. Cattle markets busy as Eidul Azhar approaches. Rituals of Holy Hajj begin from Friday. And children at debt risk in Gaza observe UNICEF and WHO. That's all from the newsroom for the moment. Thank you for being with us. Until then, see you soon.